Greetings of the day to my fellow students. Myself, Swarup Shah, Senior Lecturer, Action Kolkata. So, I'm going to discuss with you today our selling feature of the lot. In the previous class, we have already discussed with you what the definition of a ladder is, what is the hierarchy of the ladder, and what are the various functions of the ladder kitchen. In general, we have been also introduced to the various parts of the ladder. In today's lesson, we are going to talk in details about the layout of the ladder and the ladder equipments. We are also going to see how the ladder layout actually is very very helpful for the proper functioning of the department. The scope covers ladder equipments, ladder layout, sections and functions of the ladder. Layouts of ladder with other departments. At the end of the session, the students are able to describe the various equipments found in the ladder and their functions. List down the various sections of the ladder kitchen. Identify the layout zone between the ladder kitchen and other functional areas of the kitchen. Skill wise, the student should be able to prepare our ladder kitchen layout diagram as per the status of the hotel. As per the mindset is concerned, the student should be able to appreciate the importance of the ladder layout, proper placement of the equipment and their uses. And they should also be able to accept the significance of the interdepartmental and intradepartmental relationship of ladder with other sections of the kitchen and the hotel as a whole. Talking about ladder layout and the equipment, it is very very important to have a proper knowledge of the ladder layout because a value added layout of the ladder incorporating its various sections is significant for smooth workflow. We understand that for a smooth workflow it is very very vital to have a proper layout design. In addition to that, to add value to the layout, there must be strategic placement of the equipments which will help in unhindered attainment of the goals of the particular section. An insight into the functional aspect of the equipment ensures proper utilization of the machine arts and the man arts. It is also very important for the larger chefs to understand how the equipment works and it is very very vital that they are able to use the equipments effectively and efficiently so that there is no wastage of machine hours and also there is no wastage of man hours by improper waiting. The overall function of the larder and its alignment with the overall kitchen objectives must be understood for better output. When we are talking about larder layout, it is very very vital to understand what are the seven factors affecting the larder layout. The larder section, as you already know, is a cold kitchen. All the things which are prepared are prepared under a controlled temperature. The section is separated from the main kitchen and is located in a cool place. This is vital so that the environmental conditions do not tamper the required temperature setting of the particular department. Again, at the same time, when we say that it should be little away from the hot kitchen, it should not be that much away also that might lead to unnecessary traffic and delays in the work. The ladder should be well lit, well ventilated and spacious and allow the staff to carry on the duties in a clean and efficient manner. We need to realize that if we are forming a kitchen which is unnecessary stuffy, then in that situation movement becomes a problem. And when movement becomes a problem, it is clear that the workflow will not be smooth. If the workflow is not smooth, it will lead to delays, it, will, it might also lead to frustration. It must be able to store, prepare foods and buffet in a cool and hygienic manner. We need to understand that all the FSS AI laid down standards must be followed as far as the storage of the old food is concerned. We must be doubly careful about the things which we handle in the larder because most of the things which we handle are high risk items. Keeping the knowledge of danger zone in mind, it is very very important for us to realize there must be proper storage space for each category of the food. And at the same time, we must also understand that the cooked food and the raw food should not cross each other because that is very much against the hygienic workflow. It must be equipped with necessary fittings, plant, machinery, tools in accordance with the volume of the business. 
It is important that when we are placing a particular equipment in a ladder, we also understand the necessity of the equipment and the kind of output which we need. Definitely, the volume which the equipment can handle will depend on the output given by the particular section. With all these factors in mind, let us now focus on a sketch of a ladder layout. What we see in the sketch is the reflection of the various sections which are predominantly present in a 5-star hotel ladder. As we take entry to the ladder section, there is a hand wash area located near the chef's office. The sections of the ladder are located side by side one after the other with strategic location of the refrigerators. We should be taking care that the equipments which are placed in the ladder should be synchronous with the type of job which is done in the ladder. For example, we have a fish and the shellfish fabrication area, we have got a meat fabrication area, followed by a salad area, and we have got the walk-in refrigerator nearby. The reason for such a location is that, so whatever is processed in these sections can easily walk into the refrigerator to be taken out at the required time. As I mentioned earlier that we should be very careful with the raw materials which we are handling in the larder because most of them are high risk food items. Apart from that, we also have got a shakutia section with a carving section and a odos or appetizer section. Now these sections are located in such a way that the sections can work harmoniously amongst each other. As far as the placement of the equipments are concerned, the layout shows the placement of the equipments towards the wall. Now, instead of this, a different layout can be done where the equipments can be centrally placed and all other working areas can be wall facing. Depending on the total overall area available, depending on the equipments which we are installing in the ladder and depending on the workflow, this can be adjusted. The flexibility of the ladder kitchen should be such that there should be a smooth workflow. When we are talking about various sections, the section should be placed in such a way that there is no overlap of work. After focusing on the ladder layout, let us have a look at the various sections of the ladder. We have got a sauce section, a salad section, a sandwich section a shakutir section, carving section, appetizers and kodos, and meat pre-preparation area. When we are talking about the various sections, we are going to talk about the intra-departmental relationship which exists between the larder and various other parts of the kitchen. Sauce section, for example, prepares the mayonnaise sauce. The mayonnaise sauce is required in several other areas and also in the larder itself, in the sandwich section, or for making of salads. The salad section mainly focuses on preparation of different kinds of salads, their dressings. The sandwich section prepares different kinds of sandwich. The shakutia section mainly deals with the pork products, the sausages, the pate, terin, galantine, palatine, etc. can also be handled over here. Although strictly shakutia traditionally is believed to handle only the pork products. But as a flexibility of the modern operations, this kind of work can be merged depending on the hotel policy. There is a carving section. Carving section deals with the carving of various kinds of fruits and vegetables which can be used as centerpieces, can be used as garnishes and that also can be required in various departments. Appetizers and photos mainly deal with starters starters and appetizers. Meat pre-preparation pre area, the meat pre-preparation area can be further subdivided into fish and shellfish preparation area and the other white meat and red meat preparation area. One has to be very very careful while working on this section because they are handling raw meat which is again a very very high risk food item. The batch of the meat which is to be handled the batch size must be according to the skill level of the worker. According to hygiene practices, normally we should not put a batch of meat outside the refrigerated area for more than 45 minutes. 
In that situation, the batch size must be such that the person should be able to fabricate and process the meat taken out of the refrigerator within 45 minutes. Again, the fabrication of the meat should be done as per the requirement of the other sections given to the larger chef beforehand. Talking about various larger equipments, as we have already mentioned before, that a layout is incomplete without its equipments. A proper selection of the equipments leads to a proper workflow and also it leads to the overall functioning of the equipments. The larger equipments can be classified as heavy equipments and some small equipments. Now, we can see some of the equipments uh, on our slide. The first piece of equipment which we see is a buffalo chopper. Now, a buffalo chopper is, as the name suggests, is utilized for heavy duty chopping purposes. As far as the construction of the chopper goes, you will find there is a rotating bowl inside of which there is a rotating blade. The blade is covered with a steel cover on the side and there is a motor on the other side which rotates the blade. Next, we have got a mincer, a meat mincer. A meat mincer is a very efficient piece of equipment which is required to mince the meat. Mince meat is required for various kind of things like for making of sausage and also for making of calories, etc. So it is very very important that there is a proper meat mixer available in the large section. Next we have got a bone saw machine. It's another very important piece of equipment for the purpose of portion control. Just imagine you have gone to a restaurant and you have ordered for a mutton dish and you find to your surprise that one of the pieces are big and another piece is small. So you will immediately raise questions about the quality of the work done in that particular attack. So keeping in mind all those factors, this particular equipment's help, a bone saw machine ensures that if we are cutting mutton pieces or as a matter of fact any kind of meat, they are of same size and also same weight. That, there lies the efficiency of the bone saw machine. In the bone saw machine also, we have got a very very thin blade which rotates on a motor. The meat has to be pressed against the blade and the exact area with the bone gets cut off. Next, we have got a gravity slicer. A gravity slicer enables various things to be cut in required slices of required thickness. The thickness can be adjusted. You will see a video which will show you the functioning of the buffalo chopper and the gravity slicer which will certainly make things more clear to you. A vegetable food processor can go for various kind of jobs. And a smoking machine. A smoking machine helps to flavor the meat. Also, apart from these, there are several other equipments which help in the functioning of the larder. Now, these are the pieces of equipments which are commonly present in a five-star hotel larder, which helps to increase the efficiency and the effectiveness of the work, adding more value to the customer's money. Okay, hello everyone and thanks for watching another video with us. Today we are looking at two separate pieces of uh, restaurant or food service equipment. Um, the first here is a Hobart 84145 uh, Buffalo Chopper or Food Processor. So um, this is a two-part type machine and the first and main is you've got a spinning bowl with a chopping blade inside here and we'll open this up. And that spins around and the bowl spins and uh, chops and dices your food and whatever. So then you close that, turn the handle. There's a safety mechanism in there so that if this is open, this machine will not engage. So you've got to make sure it's closed and that the handle's turned properly. And obviously that that's a, uh, a safety issue. So the second part, and uh, this is an option, is um, like a, it says, I would call it a PTO drive. Um, and if you're not using this option, you simply uh, can pull this pelican head attachment off and uh, you can set it aside so that it's not in your way um, if that's the case. But what you've got is, and indeed what they call a pelican head attachment because this is shaped like a pelican's beak, kind of. Um, 
This is a uh, slicing, grating, uh, food processing attachment. And obviously your food items go in there. And then you close that. And um, as you can see right here, you've got a slicing blade on this one. So you would be uh, slicing or chopping uh, whatever it is that you put in there. So um, anywho, both of those uh, items are going to run when the machine is on. So again, if you're not using this attachment, you simply pull the whole thing off and then uh, you don't have to worry about it. Now, um, when you're looking at these machines on eBay, keep in mind that most, if not all of them, don't come with the uh, Pelican head attachment included. Ours does. And for our price, which includes shipping um, to uh, any uh, commercial location in the lower 48 with a dock or a forklift, um, you know, you're, you're getting a hell of a deal with us. Um, we do have uh, an option for residential shipping, but that's going to cost um, the buyer a little bit more. So, anywho, um, that's it. And we'll go ahead and, and basically this is a pull start, uh, push stop. Uh, set up. So you can see there's your uh, slicing or grating uh, blade that's turning in there and you can't really see inside here um, and we can't lift that obviously but we can uh, we can tell you that we're 100% confident that this uh, this machine is uh, in good operating condition now with any machine, um, we would definitely recommend that you give it a full cleaning when you get it. Um, you know, we basically knock the dust off these items um, before we uh, get them ready for sale and ship them out. So um, before you process any food, you're going to want to clean them um, and, and give them a full service as well. Uh, we don't know when the last time someone serviced this equipment. Um, we don't know when they were uh, lubricated, so on and so forth. So uh, make sure that you uh, take care of those two issues um, before you start using them. But as you can see, the bones are all there. High quality piece of equipment and uh, at a fraction of the cost. So um, now we're going to move on to equipment piece number two and we're going to get this cord over here and get it ready to plug in and the second piece of equipment is indeed a hobart edge 134054 uh, manual slicer and uh it's a manual slicer because you have to manually uh you know move that slicing platform they do make automatic slicers they tend to be quite a bit more money um but uh for those of you who don't mind a manual slicer, Hobart makes some of the best equipment in the world. So you've got a, uh, a, a knife gauge right here adjustment, and of course that works. Um, the the uh, platform slide uh, moves back and forth without issue. A um, couple of things over here we want to mention. One is there's a cover that goes over this, and... Um, it is a safety issue because obviously your spinning blade is right there and that is exposed without that cover. We do not have that cover, but we have already checked and those covers are readily available online um, without issue. So um, the second is this is the uh, knob that you uh, loosen and tighten to take off the blade guard, which is right here for cleaning and whatnot service. Um, as you can see, a portion of the one end of that knob is missing. It does still tighten and loosen without issue, so not a problem. So we just wanted to point those two items out to you. Um, now I'm going to set this down really quick. We're going to plug this in so that you can see that the old slicer turns like it's supposed to. Nice and quiet, um, nice and solid. Blades in good condition. Um, it is bouncing a little bit and that's because of the table we've got it sitting on doesn't have a lot of support underneath this slicer which is extremely heavy so um, but anyways that's it again um, we do recommend a complete cleaning and a service before you um, start utilizing these pieces of equipment but uh, um, we guarantee that you're getting something that's got all the good bones there and is in uh, good working order and just needs a basic cleaning and a service. Another very important piece of equipment which is required in a ladder, in fact without which ladder equipment set is incomplete, are the various sets of refrigerators. 
the walk-in refrigerator, the deep freezer cabinets, four-door refrigerators, these are very commonly found refrigerators used in the larder. Now, as larder is a cold kitchen, we understand from the nature of the work itself the importance of the refrigerators. Different capacities, different types to be placed at strategic points in the larder so as to ensure that proper storage can be done. While refrigerator storage, we have to ensure certain basic things that the refrigerators are not overstuffed. There should be an opportunity for proper cold air circulation. At the same time, we must also take care of the fact that refrigerator should be cleaned from time to time. We should also take care of the fact that raw materials and cooked materials should not be put in the same refrigerator cabinet. All the hygienic practices which are related to the refrigerator should be maintained from time to time to ensure there is no cross-contamination from these very important pieces of equipment. Some of the small larder tools, various kinds of serving spoons and ladles which are required to pour the sauces, cook the sauces, add the dressings, various kinds of sieves, conical strainers which are also known as chino, meat presses, whisks, egg slices, trussing needles and larding needles. The trussing and the larding needles, these are utilized for proper fortification of the lean meat with fat. There are a list of other small tools which you will find in the handout which has been already given to you earlier. Having discussed with the larder layout and the various equipments which are used in the larder, now we focus on the layers of or interrelationship between the larder with other sections. With bakery, they maintain a very very close relationship. Why? Because we have already seen sandwich section is one of the sections of the larder. Well, who is going to provide with the breads, the bakery? Normally, the five-star hotels, they do not procure their breads from outside. It is the bakery who provide the breads to the larder for different types of sandwich. So the bakery should have a very clear idea as to what is the bread requirement of the larder. The larder chef and the chef baker, or rather chef Gulani, should have a very very close niazo regarding this aspect because at no point of time the larder should run out of breads. Now breads are not only required for sandwich, they are required for canapes also which forms a very very important part of the appetizer section. 
Apart from that, various other things are also provided by the lot to the bakery. Sometimes the bakery needs lot in order to enhance some of their products. Now, the layout with the hot kitchen with the banquet kitchen is mainly related to the pickup areas. The food which is to be picked up for the banquet, say for example salads, say for example a cold meat platter, that is prepared in the larder itself. But while pickup, normally it is found that it goes from the banquet kitchen. The assembly is done from the larder kitchen to the banquet kitchen and the banquet gives the necessary pickup. So again we find that there should be a proper layer so with the banquet chef and the larder chef so as to how many parties are there, how many banquet pickups are there, what is the packs, what are the different items to be given, what are the various dishes to be served, which are the items which have got a special request from the guest. Everything is to be properly communicated to the larder chef so as to add value to the guest requirements. Apart from the kitchen areas, the larder also maintains a very, very close interdepartmental relationship with the stores, the purchase, the kitchen stewarding and housekeeping. The larder chef must be in constant touch with the store in order to see what is the stock he has at hand. A liaison with the purchase manager will ensure the availability of various kinds of raw materials and what is the lead time, that is what is the time required from the date of ordering and the actual date when the chef actually gets the thing in its hand. So a purchase manager should not only keep the larger chef informed about all these things, at the same time should also ensure that the larder chef is always updated regarding the latest things which are available in the market. The kitchen storing department should ensure that the larder equipments and the larder floor etc, the working table tops are properly cleaned and properly sanitized after day's operations. In fact, the equipments which has come in contact with the high risk food items should be ideally cleaned after every operations. Without the participation or proper cooperation from the kitchen stewarding, this is perhaps not possible. Kitchen stewarding has also got a very important task of cleaning the walk-ins. Now, walk-ins are those which store a huge amount of raw materials in them. That means, suddenly it is not possible for the larder chef to take out everything from the walk-in and allow the kitchen stewarding to clean it. That means, the reordering level has to be adjusted by the larder chef and when the inventory is at its minimum, the walk-in can be cleaned. So these are certain very finer aspects of communication. These are very finer aspects of liaison which must be maintained with the larger department continuously with the case section so as to ensure proper hygienic work area. Housekeeping provides the very important job of providing the necessary linen for the chefs, the clean uniforms for the chefs. Having discussed about the various larder layouts, the equipments which are there present in the larder and the interdepartmental and the intra-departmental relationships which the larder enjoys, which the larder has to coordinate with. Let us now focus on the larder functions. One thing is very clear from the previous lessons that larder deals with only the cold products. Having focused on the layout of the larder, the equipment placements and the various interdepartmental and interdepartmental coordination which the larder does with other sections and departments, we now come to the very important aspect of the function of the larder. We have already learned from our previous notes that larder functions are mostly dealing with the cold dishes. But cold dishes also have got a lot of variations. Larder deals with a lot of things. The storage and preparation of perishable foods, both raw and cooked. As we have already mentioned before, larder deals with the high risk food items in the form of fish, meat, etc. and also various other kinds of sausage products and so on. Now, 
Since all the products are Heinz products, it is very very important that they are stored properly for the proper time period at proper temperature. Otherwise, there will be high chances of contamination and there will be high risk of food poisoning. The meat, fish, poultry and game vegetables, other vegetables are prepared and made ready for cooking. Larder handles a very important section of the meat preparation area which is again subdivided into the fish preparation area, shellfish preparation area and the other meat preparation area. Now, as per the requirements of the various sections of the kitchen, the larder provides the fabricated meat to the chefs. Now, it is important that the larder maintains a proper work schedule such that the respective chefs can be handed over the fabricated meat over a proper period of time. All the preparations of salads, salad dressings, cold sauces, mainly mayonnaise and its derivatives, various kinds of brines, cures, marinades are all prepared in the larder. Apart from this, the cheese work, the cheese platter, Various kinds of products which are made out of cheese which also fall under the larder section. The preparation of various kinds of appetizers about which you will learn in a later lesson. The cold meat and the fish dishes. The cold dishes include the galantines, the balcones, the terines. The terine, part of the terine is prepared in the larder and then it is finished differently. Apart from that foie gras or delicacy is also prepared by the larder. Handling of exotic products like that of caviar is also the responsibility of the larder. Apart from these functions, the larder also caters to the banquet section. As we have already mentioned in the layer soap, the banquet chef must be in constant touch with the larder chef so as to ensure that the larder chef can give a proper pickup of the salads, the cold meat platters and the other related item as per the requirements of the guests. Now having come to the end of this discussion, these are certain problem questions which you will be finding in your question papers. You can go through the presentation which will be shared with you and you can also go through the notes which will provide you an insight into these questions. Because 
the cold products once they are prepared they cannot be stored outside for example a particular thing like an aspic or a shop floor once it is prepared it cannot be left outside but at the same time we must ensure that there is proper refrigeration facility to properly store all the items which has been prepared in the larder the refrigerators must be placed in such a way that there is no much transportation carrying the prepared food the prepared salads or the prepared meat from the working area to the refrigeration area proper cleaning of the refrigerators etc should be pre planned with the kitchen stewarding department with that we understand that intra departmental and inter departmental relationship is a very very important factor the various sections of the larder must work in a close knit manner and maintain value added intra and inter departmental relationships for carrying out their functions in a quality oriented manner there must be proper communication between various departments and various sections the larder chef must communicate to the various sections that what are the various items to be prepared and picked up and what are the schedules so that the section in charge can plan and schedule their work properly they can procure their raw materials process them and keep them ready for a fabulous guest experience with that we come to the end of this particular session in our next session we will be focusing on larder control in which we are going to see how the control factors are very very important for cost saving of the larder department and also we are going to understand what is eel this is a sorsha completing the lecture on larder equipments and layout thank you